Autumn, the season of magic. A colour palette of vibrancy. Burnt oranges, intense red, sun glow yellow. A veritable feast for the eyes and a gift for all landscape photographers. But I missed it. To be fair though, I have spent more time taking photos down on the coast and the UK was hit by a couple of storms which overnight stripped the trees bare. <whistles> However, until next year, here's a couple of ways that we can fake it using Photoshop. Okay, so for this first technique with our image open in Photoshop, we're gonna to come to the top right hand corner of the screen and choose a hue saturation adjustment layer. When we click on that, we have the properties open to us where we have this masters drop down menu, three sliders, the hue, saturation and lightness. And we also have these horizontal colored bars at the bottom. And these are kind of like the stretched out color wheel. Now what we want to do is change the green foliage to that autumn color. So we're going to come to the masters menu and first of all choose greens and when we do that Photoshop kind of decides what range of greens we are now going to be able to affect and that's determined by these markers now which appear at the bottom. The primary kind of green that we're going to be able to affect is what you'll find in between these two markers. So where these two markers are the range of green directly above it is what Photoshop is saying you're going to affect. However, it's also going to be a bit kind to you and say, look, this is what you're mainly going to have, but I'll give you a little bit of this either side. And that's where these two outer markers come in as well. However, the problem here is that we don't know if the position of these markers is exactly where we need them to be to kind of cover all of the greens within our image. So the way we can kind of change that is this. We come to the bottom markers here. I'm going to click on the one on the far left and drag it over to the right so that all of the markers are now bunched up together. I'll then come over to the plus sampler here, click on that and then put my cursor on top of the image. I'll click down and continually drag over the image and as I do that it's continually sampling all the different variations of green in that image and you'll notice now that these markers have now separated. So now above these markers is the range of color that we are now going to be able to affect. And all we need to do is come to the hue slider, click and drag over until we get the kind of autumn look that we want. Obviously you can go all the way over, but we're gonna to kind of tone it down to somewhere around about there. So you can see if we just click on this eye icon here to turn it off and on, off and on, really quickly create that fake autumn look. Now, one other thing that I do pretty much in all of my landscape images is also give it a little bit of a dreamy effect. The way we can do that is by clicking on the background layer, holding down the command key on Mac, control key on Windows and pressing J to create a duplicate of it. And let's just rename this one here to Dreamy Glow. Then what I will do is come to the filter menu, choose Blur and Gaussian Blur. And the radius amount here that I dial in is depending on the kind of camera that I'm using. Now I'm currently using a Sony a7R4 which is about 61 megapixels. So I'll put in around about 60, 61. Whatever the camera is that you're using, dial in the approximate pixel value uh, of that camera there and then click OK. The next thing we do is come to the blend modes and change it from normal to soft light. Now you could leave it at 100% because if I turn that off, and on, off and on, you can see the effect it's having. In fact, I'll leave it at 100% so that you can clearly see it on the screen. But I think in real life, with those me editing this picture now, I'd probably take it round to about 60%, something like that. So you can see before, after, before and after. So that's the first technique, really simple, really quick and easy. Let's put these two layers here into a group. So we've got the Dreamy Glow selected. I'll press down the Shift key and click on the layer directly above so they're both highlighted and then come to the fly out menu in the top right hand corner of the layers panel where it says new group from layers we'll call this just call it number one for the first technique now for this second technique i'll turn off that group there click back onto the background layer and then come to the filter menu and choose neural filters now in here we have a number of filters that are actually up and running fully working filters but underneath here we have these beta ones. These are the ones that have kind of been thrown out there by Adobe to have a 
to say, have a bit of a play with them, see how you get on, give us some feedback. One of them in here is this landscape mixer. Now I'm going to just press on the slider there to turn it on. And what you'll see is here, if we just scroll down, there are a number of different seasons. We've got spring, summer, autumn, and winter. So what I can do is actually take the autumn slider and drag it over just a little bit. When I do that, you'll see down here, it says processing on device. So it's sending this image, if you like, up to the cloud, looking for similar images, uh, similar kind of content and saying, right, I know what I need to do now to make it look like autumn. And you can see, in fact, there you go. So let's just kind of get that out of the way just there. You can see great looking foliage, but there's something funky going on down in the bottom here. So I'll tell you what, let's just take this out of, uh, out of the filter, put it back into the main Photoshop workspace. I'll choose the output as a new layer and we'll click OK. And we'll just double click to rename that, layer, rename that there to 2. So this is now our uh, neural filter version of creating the autumn look. And I think the foliage itself looked great. However, it has got a little bit funky in the water. There are some rocks that seem to be appearing just here. And there's some moss that's appearing and rocks visible over here. But if we kind of turn that off and on, you can see that they're kind of not visible in the original image. So... You can see that it does a great job in some areas and not so good in the other areas. However, you know, we've got to cut it a little bit of slack here because that is a beta version of this filter. So I think for a first kind of throw out from Adobe for us to have a play with this, it's pretty good. Uh, there's still a bit of work to be done there. But yeah, looking good. Quite an exciting future for the neural filters. But my favorite version is that one where we use the hue and saturation. Now, the way I showed how to use that hue and saturation adjustment layer is very similar to how you can actually use it to do skin retouching. And I did that in an earlier video. The link to that's above, or you'll also find it in the description below. But if you found the video useful, it'd be great if you could give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. That's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But if you're watching this on the day it's been released, then it's just a couple of days to Christmas. So whatever you're doing and all that we've got to contend with at the moment, have a great Christmas and I will see you in a week's time before the new year kicks in.